Hello everyone, Lytro Storm here, and today we are doing the second half to the GT version of What If Bardock Was Sent to the Future. If you missed the last part, basically I decided to carry the story into GT while I caught up on Super, so I could finish the story properly. If you need to catch up on the series, the playlist will be linked in both the description and comment section, but if you don't, then you're fine. I'll instead provide a brief recap of the last part. Basically, Pan became Goku's pupil, and so they trained and Goku turned into a kid, they went into space, then came back to Earth and fought Baby. Baby wished for a new planet, so they went there, Goku and Bardock used Super Saiyan 4, and then Patara Fusion to beat Baby. But yeah, that's the recap, so now I just want to tell you guys that if you enjoy the video, please do consider liking and subscribing to see more videos like it. And as always, be sure to join my Discord and follow me on Twitter. Links in the description. So continuing where we left off, we're going to have to start the Super 17 saga, which would consist of Dr. Mew and Jiro working together to make a better Android 17. Hell is opened and the villains run rampant on Earth, but luckily our heroes save the day. Goku then goes into Hell to deal with the problem there. And one thing to know is that while Cell and Frieza were there originally, it would only be Cell this time. And the reason for that is because King Cold had never been killed and neither had Cooler since Cooler is canon to GT. And so to explain why Frieza isn't there, if you remember, Frieza was killed by Bardock on Namek, meaning Cold never got a lead on Earth. And if Cooler never finds out that Frieza lost to a Saiyan from Earth, then he never goes to Earth either. So because of that, Frieza would escape Hell and launch past the atmosphere of Earth, since he can survive in space. He would know that it could take a long time, but if he drifts in space long enough, he may eventually find his way back to his empire then he could get revenge. But back to Earth, the Z Fighters would be handling everything pretty well, with the two 17s now showing up. Vegeta was weaker though, so we'd have to use Super Saiyan to beat the new 17. The two androids would then combine, becoming Super 17, and this guy would crush everyone even worse than in the original. However, there would be one beacon of hope, Bardock. He powered up into Super Saiyan 4 and charged at Super 17 with all of his power, ultimately getting bodied. He then used his last ditch effort, a warp lance double Kamehameha, however he wasn't aware that Super 17 could absorb energy, and thus he did so. Bardock would realize that his attacks were getting stronger, and this would in turn make him go to the ground as his son showed up to save the day. Goku wouldn't be able to mess around in Super Saiyan, instead using Super Saiyan 4 right off the bat. He begins easily beating Super 17, and plans to finish him off with his new move, the times 10 Kamehameha. However, before he fired it, Bardock yelled for him not to use it, as Super 17 could absorb Key Blasts. Goku then powered it down, and instead punched a hole through him, killing the android. The gang would then try to wish Earth back to normal, but instead the Shadow Dragons would be created. Goku would go off to face them, however Pan would follow. Bardock and Raditz also made it clear that they would follow if they felt anything going wrong, and so the grandfather-granddaughter duo flew off. They dealt with Naturon, Oceanus, Rage, and Haze Shenron as they did in the anime, however the difficulty would come with Nova Shenron. Goku could not match him in base due to being weaker than in the show, and so he would use Super Saiyan, forcing Nova into his true form. This then prompted Super Saiyan 4, but he was ultimately fodder to his fiery opponent. Bardock decided to show up sensing that Goku was losing, and used Super Saiyan 4 to help. The rest of the squad then rolls up, giving Goku the same amp he got to Super Saiyan 4 in canon. This gives him ultra full power Super Saiyan 4. And with this, he resumed his match with Nova Shenron and Ice Shenron attacked, leading to Goku being blinded. This forces Bardock to get the same upgraded form as Goku, but even with this, he was still not a match for Ice. This made him take inspiration from his son's attempt at a times 10 Kamehameha, instead using a, and bear with me for a moment, times 10 Lance Double Kamehameha. This move was easily sidestepped by Ice, but allowed for Goku to use his times 10 Kamehameha, killing him. Now Nuova would try to return to his fight with Goku, when he would be killed by Sin Shenron. Sin gathered the Dragon Balls and absorbed them, becoming Omega Shenron, and Goku was healed from his blindness, but even then he could not see the limits of his new opponent. At this point, the weaker Goku with Bardock's help is honestly nothing in the face of Omega Shenron. And I'm sure you guys have picked up on the trend, 
that since the Boo Saga, our characters have not been as strong as in canon. Which is unfortunate, but it is ultimately the truth. However, out of nowhere, a new ally arrives, Vegeta. He unlocks Super Saiyan 4 using Bulma's Bloodswave machine, and then achieves ultra full power Super Saiyan 4 with everyone else's help. However, he would tell Goku and Bardock that they still stood no chance, and this would mean that they would need fusion. Someone would have to hold him off while Bardock flew forward and attacked Omega, leaving Goku and Vegeta. The two realized this, and then fused, becoming Gogeta. Now while Gogeta wasn't as strong as in canon, he would still be able to get the job done, but would play around a bit. This leads to a defusion, leaving Goku to run out of Super Saiyan 4 power. They come up with the idea to let Bardock and Vegeta do the dance, but because Bardock is the weakest, it still wouldn't be enough to finish Omega. And plus, they don't have time for it. Omega is just rushing them and he begins beating Vegeta and Bardock down, knocking them both out of Super Saiyan 4 as well. He sends a huge ball of energy down like in the show, planning to destroy Earth. However, Goku stands in the way. He holds it back as much as he can, but he isn't as strong as in canon. That's when Bardock remembered. He got out the Patara that the Supreme Kai had given him and tossed one to Raditz. He told him that there was no time and just to put it on. Raditz and Bardock now fused, becoming Radok or something, it, it doesn't matter. What's important is that he transformed into Ultra Full Power Super Saiyan 4 and blasted Omega's attack. This crumpled it, forcing Goku onto the ground. He then instant transmission to the Shadow Dragon, kicking him away before charging up a times 10 Lance Double Kamehameha. This should be able to take Omega Shenron down, and so the father and son would now defuse. Goku thanked them, but that's when Shenron showed up. He told Goku that it was time to come with him for a hundred years to purify the Dragon Balls. Goku accepted this, but Bardock yelled out no. He told Shenron to take him instead, but the dragon said that he needed someone who was here since the beginning of the journey. Goku told his father that it was okay, and so he would go off with Shenron. However, we're not done just yet. Many years later, not the full 100, but about two decades after Goku left with Shenron, Nappa would be very old and nearing the end of his life. Vegeta, Bardock, and Raditz would all be reaching their peaks very soon, but would continue training until they couldn't anymore. Pan had also become incredibly strong, training under her great uncle and great grandfather. Trunks, Goten, and Gohan were all doing whatever they wanted with their lives, but one day, a familiar ship would arrive on Earth. It would be none other than one of Frieza's empire, and out steps a whole army, and then Frieza, Cooler, and King Cold. Bardock, Vegeta, Raditz, and Pan would be the main four to step to them, with the rest of the fighters taking out their soldiers. Frieza would reveal that after escaping from hell, he flew off the planet and drifted into space, hoping to eventually end up with his family. And many years later, ship by ship, planet by planet, he managed to make his way back. He convinced Cooler and Cold to train with him, to finally kill all Saiyans, and now, here they are. However, something important to note here, nobody would have the golden form because A, that wasn't even a thought in GT, and B, it's implied Frieza trained in hell, and yet he didn't have the form, so both in-universe and out-of-universe have an explanation. Instead, the three would be using their fourth forms, with Cooler using his final form. Cold and Frieza don't have this because Cooler wouldn't want to show them how to use it, and would decide to keep it to himself. Bardock and Vegeta both use Super Saiyan 4, while Raditz and Pan use Super Saiyan 2 to team up on King Cold. He was the weakest of the three, and so it would be a very tough battle. However, I do believe that eventually Bardock would be able to take out Frieza, leading to him helping Vegeta kill Cooler, and King Cold would be the finale. And speaking of which, that would be the finale of this series. I really hope you guys did enjoy the GT rendition of this what if, as it was pretty challenging for me to write. I hope you liked the whole Frieza thing, even if it was short, I figured I'd just add a nice little extra thing that I thought made sense and would be cool. So yeah guys, by this point I should be close to caught up on Dragon Ball Super, so I will continue working on the Super version of this what if. But as always, tell me if you liked this part, tell me what you think will happen next, comment your request for future videos, and subscribe. Thank you for watching, have a great day.